Okay. All right. And I titled this lesson. Let's mm. get started. It's, and, I, and, I, and I and I sort of start off with this writing. In order to be truly effective in our journey as disciples, it is crucial that we actively engage in equipping ourselves and allowing our as others to equip us. So it's important as disciples that we equip ourselves and we allow other people to equip us. Are y'all with me on tonight? Yes. This process, it involves us recognizing our own limitations and being open to the possibility that our current understanding may be incomplete or flawed. See, a lot of people get sensitive when it comes to you talking about religion with them because everybody thinks that they are right. But we have to understand that each and every one of us on the line on tonight, that our that 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 our our, our thinking is limited. And we could we could truly be incomplete or flawed in our thinking. But so, but we must embrace a mindset of growth and humility. And so and we strive to immerse ourselves in this discipleship process. And what we want to do in the midst of this process, as we realize that we are limited, that we have to humble ourselves and immerse ourselves in this process so we can begin to grow spiritually. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Additionally, when we come to realize the significance of our connection with Christ, and the importance of supporting and mentoring our fellow brothers and our sisters. We must come to the understanding that our connection with Christ as disciples is important. But we also have to have a connection with one another. And our goal as disciples is to be disciplers as we, as we are being discipled and as we mentor. So here are some thoughts I want us to ponder on tonight. Are the efforts of the church yielding fruitful outcomes? Is the church fulfilling its purpose in the most effective manner possible? The work of the church continues, but, it's cru but it is crucial to question whether it is truly making an impact. Are individuals experiencing salvation and undergoing transformation to resemble Christ Jesus? Are we successfully nurturing disciples who not only resist cultural influences, but also effectively disciple others in the ways of Jesus Christ? This is from the book. Consider how recent statistics show that when it comes to morality and lifestyle issues, there's little difference between the behavior of a Christian and a non-Christian. Divorce rates are about the same. This is from your book. The percentages of men who regularly view pornography are roughly the same, and it's a lot of men. Christians are considered to be more they're two times likely to have a racist attitude as non-Christians. Domestic violence, drug, and alcohol abuse, and most other problems are just as prevalent among Christians as among non-Christians. Consider, too, statistics about evangelicals. About one in four people living together outside of marriage call themselves evangelicals. Only about 6% of evangelicals regularly tithe. Only about half the people who say they regularly attend church actually attend. And a significant number of younger adults, millennials, believe that evangelical churches are not even Christ-like or Christian. 60 to 80% of young people will leave the church in their 20s. 
fewer than one out of five who claim to be born again Christians have a world view of even a few fundamental biblical beliefs. Plenty of people call themselves Christians, but very few people can actually tell you what it means from a biblical perspective to be a Christian. They might call themselves Christians, but they also believe that the Bible is full of errors or that God is not the one God manifest in three persons or that Jesus Christ did not lead a sinless life or that he is a God or that simply being good will get you into heaven. When you ask most evangelicals what their job as believers is, they may tell you that they are to share Christ. But how many people actually do? Let me ask you a question. How do you feel about what I just read? Uh, can I can I um, find out how we're using the term evangelical here? Evangelical is Christian. When we say evangelical, evange evangelical is the umbrella in which we all fall under. We like to divide and say, "Well, I'm 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 Catholic." I'm Lutheran, I'm Baptist, mm -hmm. I'm Pentecostal. But in the whole realm of things, how the church world views us is that we are all evangelicals. Okay, so we're all Christians. Yes. Okay, thank you. But what do you think when you see that that there has not been much difference between us and the world? I think that's a truth statement. Let's 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 ask a few questions. Well, our our life isn't much different than what the world see. We the the world sees. I think that we act just like um, the world because there's no difference in. We say we go to church, but there's no difference in our actions, and so it's hard for a difference to be seen. There is no difference. Even the young people, you know, what they see and what we say and how we present ourselves um, is just like what the world does. So it's like everybody think, well, I'll take my chance. And I was talking to my granddaughter the other day. We was having a conversation just from her point of view. And I, we was talking about Christ, you know, and what do you believe in? So she's she said it's hard to to believe it's just like we are all just each person on a rock in the middle of the ocean just trying to do do the best each one of us can because um we don't see where there is any change or any difference so everybody's just trying to do the best they can but we're each one of us is on our own rock trying to find the way so i was like whoa that was a little heavy. <laughs> and, and, and I think in some ways, we have failed the church. We have we have failed. And we failed because we failed to... Um, Deacon Smith, I'm going to bring you in on the phone, okay? Deacon Smith, are you there? Yeah. Okay, I'm bringing... Yeah, yeah, but I'm in the middle of teaching, so I'm just going to bring you in on the phone. I, I think... Understand. You can put me on? Hold on for a second, R Ricky. Okay. Okay, but so, so I think in some ways, thinking is glad we failed. We failed to do our job as disciplers. Are you Are you with me? Yes, I hear. I'm listening. And so a lot. So so we have, and one of the things I noticed at Hope is that we're missing a couple of generations at Hope. Mm. We're at a point now where we want to hand off work. To the next to the next person, but it's like running a relay, and you're running as fast as you can, but you get there, nobody's there to hand the baton off to. Right. And it, it is there because we have failed to do what we are supposed to do. But we know that something is wrong. Yeah. So we get to the, we get to these questions here. Where is the lasting life change? Where are the transformed lives? Why are people in our churches just like the world? Yeah. Why are we not developing people who are Christ-like? So we have to we have to really understand that where is the life 
where is the where is the lasting life change in the church? Where are the transformed lives when we bicker and argue just like we are in the world? And we do the same things they do. We we try to hide it, and but we're and we're not developing people. The solution to our ineffectiveness as churches simply is to train people to be spiritually mature, fully devoted followers of Christ, and then in turn to have those disciples make more disciples. But let's park here for a second. We have to make sure that we are spiritually mature. Amen? Amen. We have to be fully devoted followers of Christ. We can't be devoted only when we want to. And let me throw this in parenthetically. I can't come to church and ask Deaconess Belches to be devoted, and I don't want to be devoted on that same level. That is correct. But many times, we want other people to be devoted. We want other people to serve in excellence. We want other people to maximize their potential when we don't do it for ourselves. And just like Deacon is glad to say it, the young people will be the first ones to spot it out. So our lesson objectives for tonight. Understand the importance of intentional discipleship and equipping ourselves. We have to recognize the need to let go of the crab mentality and embrace learning from others. We have to embrace spiritual maturity through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We have to cultivate a strong connection to Christ and our fellow brothers and sisters. We must commit to empowering and mentoring others without feeling threatened or insecure. Y'all with me? So, so let's, let's look at those objectives again. We have to understand the importance of intentional discipleship and equipping ourselves. So our discipleship must be intentional. Mm -hmm. And we must be committed to equipping ourselves, number one. And the reason why I put that as number one, because number two, some of us have a problem with other people equipping us. Because we have the crab mentality. We want to pull them down instead of letting them pour into us. Mm -hmm. and what I'm trying to do is teach this from a real perspective. We have to embrace spiritual maturity. It's not corny to be spiritually mature. Amen, lights. Amen. It's not corny to be spiritually mature. And being spiritually mature is done by the aid of the Holy Spirit. So we have to learn to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we must be intentional about cultivating or growing a strong connection with Christ and we must be connected to our fellow brothers and sisters, regardless of how we feel about them. Mm -hmm. And there must be a commitment to empowering and mentoring others without feeling threatened or insecure. You can't worry about somebody else taking your job or taking your position. So here we get to the lesson outline. Introduction. We have to understand what discipleship is and what is transformative power. It is important for us to equip ourselves and be open to learning from other people. And also, let, let, let me throw this in again. Not only must we be open to learning from other people, we need to be open to learn from other churches and other denominations as well. Because we have to understand that Christ is not divided. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I want to look at tonight is embrace humility and recognize our own limitations. It is important for us to know and to acknowledge 
that we don't know everything about the Bible. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mosley does not know everything about the Bible, but the one thing Pastor Mosley will do is study. Amen. Amen. You don't know everything about the Bible, but the one thing you can do is study. There should be a desire for the disciple Amen. to want to grow. So in order to grow, you got to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. But see, due to the fact that we don't know everything about the Bible, it is our mandate to be a lifelong learner of the word as we live it and as we teach it. And I want us to understand on tonight that, you know, I know it's, I know it's cliche-ish, but we cannot be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Because our mandate is to serve. It's not to walk around HMBC or any church thinking we know everything when in fact we don't know everything. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that we have a heretical or an incorrect surface view of God and his word. That's why we must immerse ourselves in the word. And I encourage you, as we engage this discipleship learning process to embrace a humble attitude and have a willingness to learn when it comes to God's word, we must have a willingness to learn when it comes to knowing about the body of Christ, not the church as a political entity. We have to have a willingness to learn when it comes to discipleship and mentorship as well. Are there any questions about that? Mm -hmm. We talked about this before, but I said put aside the crab mentality. The crab mentality is an analogy to the selfish and envious behavior of someone upon other people's success. The crab mentality is also defined as someone's tendency to pull down people around them who they consider are better than them in any aspect. I'm at, I want to ask this question. Why is there a need to let go of jealousy, competition, and insecurity, especially in the church? Yeah, I'll tell so you why. Because it is, it is God... <clears throat> who has strategically placed all of us where we are. Amen? Yes. God put you there. God is the only one that can remove you. So when you get a position in a church or in an organization, you don't have to worry as long as you are doing what God has told you to do. Uh -huh. Because I want you to understand something. God is the only one that can fire you and leave you on the job. But there's no need for jealousy in the church. There's no need for competition in the church. There's no need for insecurity in the church. Why is there no need for jealousy? Because we are all on the same playing field. Every last one of us in the church if I can line us up from youngest to oldest, we are all in need of a savior. Amen. So we are all standing firm on the same playing ground. There is no competition because we are not getting brownie points from God. And there should be no insecurity because it is God that called you out of darkness and called you forth into ministry. And God is the only one that can remove you. Unless you decide to remove yourself. As disciples, I encourage you to embrace a supportive and collaborative approach to learning. Be willing to learn. You know, you can learn from anybody. You can learn from, we can learn from the children. We can learn from anybody. So never miss an opportunity to learn. Even if you don't like somebody. Never miss an opportunity to learn. And think about it. Just like you don't like folk in ministry, there's some folk that don't like you either. 
but but we are called to be unified. The next one I want to talk about is nurturing the nurturing spiritual maturity through the Holy Spirit. We have to ask ourselves, what part does the Holy Spirit play in the maturing, in, in maturing our faith and maturing our understanding? The Holy Spirit is the vehicle by the by the way we, we move and grow in our faith and our understanding. Our illumination comes by the aid of the Holy Spirit. God gave the word of God as a revel his word as a revelation by the aid of the Holy Spirit, and we understand it through illumination by the aid of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit plays a pivotal role in our maturing process. It is important for us to intentionally cultivate a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about just jumping and shouting. Amen? But you have to ask yourself, what does cultivating or growing a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit look like to me? One way to do it is by seeking to seek spiritual growth through prayer, studying the word, devotions, and reflection. Any questions on that? No. The power of connection. Christ and fellow believers. If we're going to be effective disciples and disciple makers, our relationship with God and our connection, connection to Christ must be looked at as the foundation of discipleship. I'm going to say that one more time. Our relationship with Christ and our connection to Christ is the foundation of discipleship. Not only must we have a connection with Christ because he is the foundation, we must also have a connection with the people. Are y'all with me? Yes. That means what that what that means, Deacon the Smith, is that we truly must be in fellowship with one another. Yes. We must be able to hold one another accountable to the word of God, not to the word of self. Mm -hmm. But we are to engage in fellowship with one another, be able to hold one another accountable and be willing to mentor one another. Because our connection with Christ should fuel our, our connection with one another. Okay. Amen. Because check this out. In the whole scheme of things, we aren't worthy to be connected to Christ. Right. We are not worthy to be connected to Christ. But thank God for the blood. Yes. Amen. And salvation is a gift. And if Jesus loves us enough to forgive us of our sins, we should love our brothers and sisters enough yes. to forgive them of their sins. Because sometimes, let me let, let, let me talk real and, and real about, because I've been in church a long time, almost 45 years. And sometimes we get mad at folks because they get in the way with stuff that we didn't get away with. Mm. <laughs> mm. Or we are upset with them because they sin differently than we do. But we must have a heart of forgiveness and reconciliation yeah. when it comes to being in fellowship with one another. But not only that, we have to be able to hold ourselves accountable as we hold our brothers and sisters accountable. Yes. 
And mm -hmm. we must be willing to come alongside them and equip them in the discipleship process. Mm -hmm. There's a power in our connection. We talked about this a little bit, but I want to go on, go into this a little deeper. We have to be able to empower others without being insecure. Many people minister in fear of being, and this, this is not in your book. This is, not, this is what God gave me. Many people minister in fear of people taking their place. Everybody's not a backstabber. Amen? Amen. So everybody is not trying to take your place. And if you think about it, what you're doing, no matter where you are, God gifted you to be able to be there. Amen. So MIT Belchus is gifted differently than Deacon is Gladden. Yes. Deacon is Gladden is gifted differently than Pastor Mosley. Yes. Pastor Mosley is gifted differently than Lady Shelton. But that doesn't mean that one is better than the other. Because the last time I checked, we needed all hands on deck. Amen. And the last time, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I thought we were a part of the body of Christ. That's right. Well. So the body is made up of many members. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be a toe. <laughs> Everybody can't be a lung. Everybody can't be an ear. But think about it. One of the parts of your body that you probably pay the least attention to is your baby toe. Amen? Amen. You spend most of the day not paying attention to your baby toe. You might <laughs> consider it one of your least members until you stub it. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the least member will take you down. Take you down. Yes, it will. Cause you to bring all the other members down. <laughs> right. So, so that lets you know from a, just, just a physical example, that everything, everyone is required to do something in the body of Christ. We've been gifted differently for a reason. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for us to be insecure about somebody else's gifting because their gifting is connected to their process and their gifting is connected to their purpose, which is different than yours. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's a slogan, iron sharpens iron. Yes. So. Amen. Amen. So we shouldn't be looking to tear each other down. We should be looking to build each other up. But over the past few decades, we have been bent on tearing each other down. Mm. And that's what you said when we first started, that our churches begin to look like the world. We've let the world infiltrate the church. That's the type of behavior that the world exhibits. And we've grafted into that. And that's what people are, I want to say, accustomed to seeing at this point inside the church itself. And people don't want to be bothered with it. I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't blame them. Nobody wants to go, leave a fight and go into another one. That's right. There should be no fears or insecurity that arises when we are discipling or mentoring. They're just point blank. And I and I say and I stated this before, and I'm reading it, reading it from my notes. It is so because it is God who has called us to our positions that we are in. And only God and God alone can remove us from those positions. The one person, if you want to look at, if you want to look at this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about you tonight, Deacon and Smith. Mm. God told me 
Stinky Miss Smith is going to be over Sunday school. Now, he told me that. I don't know what he told her. But she said, no, 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 no. Her, her favorite line, no, 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 no. <laughs> said, no, 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 no. Got me. So, so, this, so <laughs> Candace, let me tell you what happened. We went into a meeting, and we voted in a new head of the Sunday school. She said I would serve as the co-chair. Five minutes after that person was voted in, they said, no, nah, I really don't want it. So they stepped down after holding the position for five minutes, mm, making God. God's word come to life. She wow. became the head of the Sunday school that night and hasn't looked back since. I love it so because I am learning and growing so much. She said, she said she loves she's on she's on the speakerphone. She loves it and she's growing. Yeah. Her she's, and her family. Good. Excellent. God. And so if God, if God has, if God is going to put you in a position, he wants you in a position, he will make sure it happens. But it is God that has put us all in our positions. So due to the fact that it is God that has called us, we should be secure and excited about telling other folk about Jesus and imparting our knowledge into them. And, and, and this is something, this, um, digging this uh, belt is something not created today, but I call it the ministry of selflessness. Mm -hmm. We need to all take hold of the ministry of selflessness as we regularly encourage the growth and elevation of others. We should be so comfortable, you know, that and so excited about the fact that God has called us. We should be excited when God calls somebody else. Yes. Embrace a mindset of abundance and trust in God's plan. My last one, the Great Commission, teaching and baptizing. Jesus has given us a clear mandate to spread the gospel and to make disciples. Are we all in agreement? Yes. And let me let me let you know this so 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 that we are clear. This is not an option. This is an essential part of our calling as believers. People mistakenly feel like they can be Come converts first and disciples later. But this notion is not supported in scripture. Have you have you all ever seen that? Yes. Oh, you, you have? Yes. <laughs> Where? I see it in church all the time. No, no, not in church. In church, you see it. In church, you see it, but it's not in scripture. Oh, oh, not in scripture. No, no, it's not in scripture. No, not. We haven't seen the scripture. So, scripture does not tell us we can be converted and then become disciples thirty years later. So, it is crucial for us to recognize the importance. It is important for us to be equipping ourselves with the knowledge from the word and actively living out our faith. It's important, especially in the times that we live in. We live in a time where we don't know what the next hour is going to bring. We got so many crazy folks in office doing whatever they want to do. It is important that we be right with God. And not only must we be right with God, but we must be living this thing out. Why? Because there's somebody watching Elder Kill. 
There's somebody watching Stacy. There's somebody watching uh, Digging His Belches. There's somebody watching Candace. There's somebody watching Mamie. There's somebody watching uh, Sharon. There's somebody watching the Smiths. There's somebody watching you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And let me tell you, there's somebody out there depending on you to get this right. There's somebody depending on your discipleship. Their final destination depends on it. There's somebody's ministry that needs your mentorship. There's somebody out there that needs the encouragement from your testimony. But we must be willing to draw knowledge from the word of God. I didn't say the church. I didn't say gospel music from the word of God and be willing to live it out no matter what the cause, cost. We must be willing to live this thing out. God never said it was going to be easy. He never said we were going to be comfortable. He never said every people were, everybody was going to like us. But he did promise never to leave us nor forsake us. So it's crucial for us to recognize the importance of us making sure that we are equipped. By doing this, my brothers and my sisters, we can help other people experience the transformation that we ourselves have experienced. The church is where it is because it bring it should bring about transformation. That's the difference between a church and a gang. When somebody walks through the doors of your church, no matter what church you go to up in here, there should be a spirit of transformation in the place. As believers, It is of great importance that we not only live the knowledge, but we share the knowledge that we have about Christ. Mm -hmm. We share this so, like I stated, there's transformation or conversion. The Great Commission says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But not only that, we teach them about discipleship. And we teach them about the obedience to the word of God that we are walking in. The time is over. In the church and in the world, this do as I say, not as I do. We need, if we're going to talk the talk, my brothers and my sisters, need, we need to be willing to walk the walk. All of us are leaders on the line, and all of us must have a commitment to discipleship and mentorship. I encourage all of you to participate in the Great Commission. In conclusion, I want to summarize the key points discussed in this lesson. Emphasizing the significance of intentional discipleship. Humility. Supportive communi community. And active involvement in empowering other people. Do your best as we start this process. to apply these principles in your own lives. I encourage you to make personal growth a priority and do your best to make a profound impact on the world around you. And now what I have here for you once we finish is questions for you to think about once, you, once we finish. Are there any questions? No. No questions, Michelle? None this evening, Pastor. <laughs> so <laughs> what did yet. you what did you glean from this teaching? Well, 
we have a job to do that we have not been doing. We have not been effective as disciples. Uh, it's not enough to be uh, to study personally. It's something that we need to do corporately. We need to share with one another. We need to live out the life that Christ has purposed for us to live out. We need to mirror him. So other people could see that and have a desire to want to wanna copy what we're doing, what we have. You know, like you were saying, when people walk into the sanctuary, there should be they should be able to see a transformation. There should be a joy. There should be a pulling. There should be a, um, a desire to be in that space, to want to come back to that space because something is different. Man. And I think, and I think we have to understand that we have over the decades, we have failed. We have, we have been content to be uh, a church full of converts, living any type of way, well, doing happened? anything and saying anything. It is called. Hmm? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. And, and, and it's caused a great exodus. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us, you know, if we want to see our family saved, our community saved to do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And basically the main thing that I wanted us to, to glean from on tonight, as we get started in the book, is that there is work that we need to do. There is serious work that we need to do as those who are supposed to be discipling others. Like I stated, there's somebody counting on you. You, you, you when, when, you, when we kind of look back over, over what we discussed, is that um, we have to be humble, and we have to recognize our limitations. We cannot be worried about who is teaching us and who's not teaching us. We can't look down on our brothers and sisters simply because they are brothers and sisters. And a lot of times we tend to look down on one another, not based off of what people have done, just because we're familiar with them. But we have to allow ourselves to be equipped by other people. And we have to put aside the crab mentality. Uh, we have to nurture a spirit of maturity and humility by the aid of the Holy Spirit. And we have to be willing to be connected to Christ and to be connected with one another. And I know sometimes that's difficult because we don't always see eye to eye. We don't always agree. Um, we don't always like how we talk to one another, but our connection with Christ is the foundation of our discipleship. And we are to be connected to our brothers and our sisters. And we need to be able to work and we need to be able to serve without being insecure, understanding that it is God and God alone that has called us out of darkness and called us forth into ministry. And we must be willing to go ye therefore. And when I say go ye therefore, I'm not talking about staying at the church when it's cool in the summertime or when it's warm in the wintertime, but we are to go and be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. To all the nations, that means to everybody that needs to hear about Jesus Christ. We have to be willing to come alongside people. We have to be willing to leave our place of comfort and become, become uncomfortable to preach the gospel, to teach the gospel, to tell them the truth about God, and to be heal to be a healing balm to people so that they know the gospel and they see us living it out and they come running asking, what must I do to be saved? So we must be willing. And so often we are unwilling to do that. And the time is now as we dig into it for a greater understanding of discipleship, how we have to kick off this process. In, any other comments? 
Y'all sleep while I'm just thorough. I was just, <laughs> thorough. God is going to hold us individually accountable. Um, I don't know if that bothers too many people, but that's something that when I have to give an account, I want it to be a favorable one. I want God to be pleased. Um, I don't know everything. I'm learning as I go. But I do know that God is not a God of confusion or disorder or any of those things that we've been witnessing. So I'm trying very hard not to be by the aid of the Holy Spirit, because when I say I'm trying, I'm not doing this on my own, obviously. But I'm trying by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk as closely as I can with Jesus. And that's not easy. You know, there are certain times where I actually, I thank God, I catch myself, you know, and I, and I, and I, I'm like, nope, I, I can't say that. I can't do that. I can't be there. Um, it's a learning process. It's a daily learning process. It is. But we want the Lord, I want God to be pleased. And that's my main objective. It, it's, it's, a, it's a daily learning process like you stated and it's up to us to to, to use wisdom yes as we navigate things on a daily basis it's up to it's up to us to be able to see and to be able to discern that's why we have to stick we have to have you know a close attachment to the holy spirit yes. so when the holy spirit speaks we are able to hear but we have, but 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 let, let's be honest. There are some common sense things that we just don't do. Mm. But we, but sometimes we just feel like oh, I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna say it anyway. But okay. the thing is, we have you have to. Okay, let, let, I, I know, I know, Lady Shelton gonna like what I'm gonna say. You got to protect your oil. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have, mm -hmm. God, God has anointed you for mm -hmm. for, for, for a time such as this. You got to protect your oil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. I like you have, that. You have, you, have, you have to guard your oil. Mm -hmm. You have to guard your reputation. You have to guard your name. That when your it says, Bishop. Your name precedes you. Yes. Is that your, when it says, don't give your pearls? Huh? Don't give your pearls to swine. That's it. And a good reputation is far better than rubies. Amen. 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 And, you, and your reputation, your integrity speaks for you when you ain't in the room. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's it. And so, but it's up to you to protect that. And, and, and the way I look at it is in certain places, I don't go. Yes. It's certain company I don't keep. Absolutely. I will spend time alone to protect my oil. Versus going out and, and, and have my name all over some nonsense. Because mm -hmm. my, my, my father stated this, you're known by the company that you keep and you're known by the way you take. Mm -hmm. But Amen. either way it goes, when you get to your final destination, whether it be heaven or hell, you cannot come back. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> I'm getting happy over here. <laughs> right. You know about the company you keep. The thing about it, we all, we, we all, we all, we all, we all had some some homeboys and some homegirls we ran with, and you might be just chilling in in the cut with, with your group back in the day, but if somebody do something, they gonna say, oh, they will, they did them, and oh, and I saw Sharon Reddick with them. <laughs> they ain't gonna say that about my Sharon. <laughs> you know, they, 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 you, because you're known by the, especially being church folk. Because mm -hmm. see, guess what? That, 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 that if, if Elder Kill go out and clown, it's not just gonna be Elder Kill on, on trial. Mm -hmm. They gonna say they they gonna they, they, they gonna see Elder, they gonna say them church folks. Folks, yes. <laughs> and and then they're gonna bring yep, don't he go to hope? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mosley, yeah, 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 yeah I, I, I knew it. I knew he wasn't teaching them nothing over there. But the heathens. <laughs> God forbid, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. 
But the, but that but 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 you know by the company that you keep. That's right. But That's then right. but then but I'm gonna tell you something though. But when you keep the right company, you start getting haters. Ooh, come on. Wow. But that's okay. Ugh. But see, but see, somebody told me if it, 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 so 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 this is this how I go. I, th I think I told this to Michelle. If you got one mm -hmm. hater right now, it's your job to have two by the end of the week. That's right. That's right. You carry the blood stain better with such effectiveness that two more folk be like, Ugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because we always say the devil don't bother. He don't bother teammates. Come on. Come on. But we have to understand it is our job. To disciple other folks. Yes, indeed. It's our job. And you know, it, 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 there was someone that came to mind uh, this evening, and I asked the prayer line to keep them in prayer. But uh, I should have been because you may try. You may. They may have seen how seen how God has changed your life. You know, they knew you when they know you all your life. Uh huh. But, but, but they refuse because that's just, you know, as they, they refuse. Right. But God, you, you can give all the examples and, 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 and live the word right in front of the main city, but God will make an increase. Yes. And, one of, and, and, let, me, and let, me, let me say this before we get ready to go. One of the greatest ways people can see Jesus, especially folks that know you, is to see the change in your life. Yes. Because they know that you didn't do it of your own accord. Mm -hmm. and, what, and, and what our folks would do, they'll sit back in the cut and watch you for a long, long, long time uh -huh. before they acknowledge it. But the best way for them to see Christ is to see the change in you. And, it, it, and it's imperative for us, like I said, as we engage this process to understand how serious discipleship is and how mm -hmm. neglected it has been. And so now, even though I got a few folks on the line, we got to get more folks from hope on the line. Amen. So, 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 so they can walk this journey with us. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. imperative that we understand the importance of the discipleship process. Mm -hmm. And that it needs to be all hands on deck. Yes, indeed. And, 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 and let me throw this in. It needs to be all hands on deck in every aspect of the church. Mm -hmm. So if you're sweeping the floor, you sweep the floor to the glory of God. That's exactly right. My mom always used to say, you be the best street sweeper you can be. If, if, if you're cleaning the lavatories, clean them to the glory of God. You know, if, if you preach it, preach to the glory of God. Pray to the glory of God. But everything should be, even when we meet, our meetings should be done to the glory of God. Our conversations should be about the glory of God. Amen. Not about what he say or she say, but what about God say? That's exactly right. And so it's important for us to carry this mantle mm -hmm. of discipleship in a, in a, in a serious way. Mm -hmm. So are there, are there any questions? We will finish up chapter one next week. Sounds good. Amen. 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 Was this worth your time on tonight? Always. Amen.